Greetings, loved ones. Let's take a chance. It's time for Amanda <laughs> Exclusivo. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Amanda Exclusivo. I am here with Rick Hoffman. Hi, Rick. How are you? Hi, Amanda. Hi. I'm doing well. I'm doing well, thanks. How's it going? Going. It's going great. I'm uh, basically on an indefinite hiatus until this wonderful sickness uh get, you know somehow gets eradicated so in the meantime i've been uh i've just been kind of relaxing i wish everybody can just sort of work from home so they can pay their rent and stuff i i sort of got lucky over the course of uh the last 10 years where i have some time i can spare and not have the pressure to go right back which is very very fortunate oh yeah absolutely so what's funny, Rick, but, um, how I got introduced to you is because of my mom. My mom went to high school with you. Mm -hmm. We went to high school, and, and our high school was very small for a public school, so pretty much everybody knew everybody. And your mom was always a sweetheart. And um, over the years on and off, we had kept in touch. And um, I went out west. Well, I mean, I, so I had, you know, I, I didn't even know I wanted to act really seriously until I switched majors in college. And then they whipped me into shape, but then I moved out to Los Angeles and I waited tables in about a hundred different jobs that I got fired from. Oh. And then, oh yeah. Oh no, come on. It's not something I plan on doing with my oh, life. Oh like no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, working paycheck to paycheck for about 10 years. And then, um, and then in the year 2000, February 23rd to be exact, I got my first uh, break in a TV series. So did you go to acting school beforehand? Right. So I, well, I, I, I was an awful student and one of the choices of three was Arizona. And so I, for whatever reason, I just went like this and said, okay, I'm going to Arizona. I could have stayed back East and Arizona just so happened, didn't, didn't even know, happened to have this amazing drama department that was very high budgeted, highly competitive. And our you know, it, uh, I, I immediately, because I started as a business major, I audited a class and I changed majors immediately. And that's when I started to get like, okay, I think I want to do this. And I only went to those classes and I didn't go to any of the other classes. So only acting classes. And then I just basically tanned in, <laughs> in my dorm. And then you, had, you had a little patio area where you could, yeah. where you could do that. I ran a tanning course in Arizona. Sign That's me up much. for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, uh, I was literally worse than Donald Trump. I, I looked like a real bona fide Oompa Loompa. I was that orange. So, Rick, what was your first big acting gig? Tell me all about it. First big, well, the, well, first big acting gig would be the first series that I got on. And that was um, how I got on that series. It would never have worked now. So that's a whole other story. But the, when I finally did get this role, it was the most coveted role of the pilot season in 2000. Darren Starr had just come off Sex in the City in his second season. So that was just climbing to be a hit. And he is now producing this Wall Street drama called The Street. And I... God knows how, if it was a difference of one day or being in the wrong place at the wrong second, I would never have gotten this job. And I ended up getting, a, you know, from going from waiting tables at Jerry's Famous Deli, leaving that job because I had gotten cast that morning. Now all of a sudden I'm in a series with Jennifer Connelly and Giancarlo Esposito and Adam Goldberg, people that I would watch on the movie screen. And now all of a sudden I'm playing the lead of a, of a, of a television series on Fox. So that would be, I would be, that day was the most amazing. I can't even tell you the spectrum of emotions that I had had after struggling for so long and getting that call that I actually got the role. I, it's, it, it was unexplainable, but I will never forget it. So what was the audition process like for you? I know well, you've been on other shows also. So we'll, we'll touch upon that in a little bit. So, well, it, it's all, you know, for certain actors, there's, there are more hoops to jump. Uh, I had to jump through the most hoops when I was first starting, where you go through literally a four to five 
different meeting process, a pre-read, producers, then you test in front of the studio, and then you test in front of the network. And each time the swords get sharper, there are more people in the room right. and their personalities get colder. There's nothing warm about the audition process. Nobody, when you're in there, they're, they're just, they keep a straight face and the energy is really bad. So it really, in a way, when you're an actor and you're doing a scene in front of people that have no energy, it really is something that sets you up to fail because it makes you it, it's nerve wracking, gives you so much anxiety. Sure. You're not in a comfortable setting, let's just say the least. Yeah, no. So if you can do well. But I'm sure it's a lot of pressure. Tr I mean, the most, really. Absolutely. I mean, not that I've ever been to acting school, but still. Well, I mean, you know, but if you're being asked to do something that, um, whether it be public speaking or anything where you're putting yourself out there and it's in front of people that are almost purposely not giving you any type of emotion, they're just completely cold, it's like you, uh, you could really melt and just completely choke, which is what a lot of people do. They choke they, uh, and they get too nervous and they, get, they walk out of there hysterical crying you know it's it's tough it's it's very cutthroat i mean it, it yeah i can't it, it, and uh so that's why i mean i give i give the actors so much credit for you know their the amount of you have to have that that real perseverance and that real stick to and belief in yourself to really get through that threshold because it is not easy at any real at any stage at any stage I have no idea. My first test in front of 20 different executives sitting in the dark to do four scenes. I don't know how I got through it, but I did and I ended up getting that job. Never since then, you've had a lot more acting gigs. A lot of people know you from the TV show Suits. Right. So that was, see, so that was in 2000. I didn't get cast in Suits until 2011. So oh. you, there are different versions of like working as an actor. That series, sure. my first job. That only lasted seven episodes on air. Oh, really? <laughs> this is how it works. They told you, you know, it doesn't matter how many, what, how many great actors you're with, or it's just a matter of the stars aligning and getting lucky that an audience decides they like it. So I had about four different experiences like that, all maybe lasting the most a year mm. and getting canceled. And it was always back to the drawing board. So I was, I was working, but it, it was definitely frustrating because all I wanted was to have a job that I could stick around a while and you get sort of like, you feel like you can, you know, you like to go to the same place each day and the camaraderie of a, of a group of people working together. And then finally in 2011, uh, never in a million years would I have thought it, but yeah, I got, uh, I got suits. And that was that job. So it's not only is it a lottery ticket, a winning a lottery ticket to get a job in the business, it's winning two lottery tickets to be on a job that lasts as long as mine, that suit like the one that suits lasted for nine years. It's as if like, you know, you have to be the luckiest person in the world. Yeah, so I wanna hear all about it. Tell me about what it was like to play Lewis on Suits and working with the entire cast. As far as playing Lewis, it, end, it ended up being the job of, of my lifetime because he started off as kind of like a one note douche. <laughs> but then because my boss, I guess, I don't know, for whatever reason, he knew he had seen me in other things and he had his plan all around was to make Lewis the anti-hero and to give him some real humanity. And he became from, he went from being a douche to a walking heart. So basically mm. he was like the most vulnerable character, the one who had the biggest arc on this show throughout nine years. And all I found myself doing as an actor, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to cry hysterically in this episode again. <laughs> Is it hard to make yourself cry on the That spot? was my biggest vulnerability as an actor. Something I couldn't do as a kid. When I was younger, I could, it was my, the biggest thing. It was the biggest, most challenging thing. And somehow as I got older with more life experience, it started to become, it wasn't easy, it's never easy. Anytime I read the script and it's, it's like, you have to, I get scared and I'm dwell, I just dwell on it for eight days until I have to do it. And then somehow, some way, I don't know, it works. But uh, it was, it, after the experience of Suits, I can honestly say 
I really don't feel, I really, I feel like, you know, you know, I, I had, I played a role. I'll never have a role like that again. That was so um, wide ranged. And I'm, I'm good with that. From now on, you, I'll just be the boss. I'll come in, I'll say a couple of lines and I'll, and I'll get out. That's what I want to do from now on. <laughs> Go in, cry, and leave. Oh, come No, no, no more crying. Now I'll just be like the hard-edged boss. Okay, McGillicuddy, McClanahan, give me your badge. I'm out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And working with the cast was great. Working with the crew was great. It was like having a family for nine years. Dysfunctional, to say the least, but we loved <laughs> each other, and I'll, I, it, it'll be the best decade I'll ever have, you know, in my but 40s. you still keep in touch with everybody? I do. I actually spoke to, well, I speak to most of them, on uh, at least every month. Um, during the pandemic, it's been a little tougher just because, you know, everybody's sort of dealing. But um, yeah, and I talk to my, bo my old boss every day. Um, okay. we're, we're good friends. That was my nine year experience living in, in, a, in, in a, well now not so far in a country, living in Canada for nine years. And now I've become a permanent resident. Wow, that's, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, I've been wanting to ask you since you're still really close with the cast. I know you went to the royal wedding. How did oh, you have fun? Well, we had a. I mean, that is something that's talk about something that's so not of this planet. Um, <laughs> you know, you're like in a in like a living in a different time, basically when you're on the grounds and and there were so many people there. You know, we we were very very lucky to have our whole group get to go together. So it was like. Yeah. I mean, it was just a non uh, yeah, nonstop three-day party. Um, three-day party. Basically, yeah. We, you know, we had the Friday night, the Saturday, and the Sunday. And then I threw a party for our cast and crew, whoever was invited, when um, it was for the, when they had an intimate, they had a party that was for very, like, intimate guests. And the whole cast was not, we couldn't go. So I decided to throw a dance party in the middle of this very, very, um, you know, snooty English hotel. <laughs> and uh, the whole cast of suits pretty much in there, us and, their, and our kids all just like, we got, we, we got down. That's so nice. That really must have been a special memory for, for everybody. And we'll never, really we will never so forget much. it. Never, we, ne we will never forget it. Is Suits your favorite show that you've worked on so far? Or is it now Billions? Well, Suits will always be something over here, you know, that can't be replaced. Sure, yeah. However, um, you know, when you're working with some actors that you've been fan, a fan of for so long, like Paul, for me, Paul Giamatti, it's equally as satisfying. Yeah. You know, and especially if they're nice and kind. So in this particular case, Mr. G Paul could not be a nicer guy. So and all of a sudden, I'm in love with the job again. So I want to talk to you now about Billions. Oh, okay. So how did you land that role? So that was n not to my, I didn't know, but apparently Brian yeah. Koppelman, <laughs> sorry? You didn't know? Well, I didn't know that I, they wanted me on the show. They, I think, you know, Brian Koppelman and, and Dave Levine had in mind something else that hadn't been done yet. Um, but Dave Constable, who was on our show Suits, who played Hardman for a long time, he was directing his first episode on Billions, and there was a role as of a doctor that had one scene, and he said that he thought that I'd be perfect for it. He He pitched it to the creators, and they were like, yeah, well, and, and the thing was, when I read it and they offered it to me, I was like, well, listen, guys, I was thinking of a little something different after Suits. I don't want to be a one and out. And they said, well, no, we'll write this for you. But we're going to make it not just a, a one and done. So I have no idea what they have in store for this disgusting character, but <laughs> um, um, I couldn't have made a better choice. I, I mean, I love the show to begin with, and those writers are amazing. And uh, so, yeah, when I get back after the pandemic, whenever, I guess I'll be in and out of Brooklyn shooting Billions. 
Wow. I want you to tell us more about your character on the show. Well, that's the thing. They only finished seven episodes because they had to stop because of the sickness. Right. And they have five that they owe for the season. And I was told that I'll be involved in those. But I don't know exactly. There was two different ways they could go with this disgusting doctor. And I'm not allowed to say Ooh. which like direction. Watch. But let's just say that the ideas are really funny, like and interesting. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm like, how is a doctor going to be fitting into this trading? And <laughs> they have a, a very interesting, uh, if either one, I would be like, that would be awesome. We'll see. I wish I could tell you. I know. It's okay. We'll just, we'll just have to wait. No, I mean, you know, for the people who really watch Billions, you know. Yeah, my uh, mom has been hooked, and it's my grandpa's favorite show. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. It's to the point where he, like, can't pronounce the word billions normally. He goes, billions. I'm like, are you watching billions <laughs> or billions? Like, billions. Which billions. One, which one? <laughs> billions, kind of, the way he says it, kind of sounds like, you know, billions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, it's funny. <laughs> I'm like, are you watching Billions? That's probably yeah, right, the right, right way to say it. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm sure, I think everybody's just sort of going like this. Like, when yep. is it all starting up again? We don't know. Um, yeah, I'm sure that's probably one of the biggest challenges now that you're facing as an actor, for sure. So what, what have been some of the other challenges that you've faced? In the career would definitely yeah. be how to work so i was mentioning earlier that sometimes you know prior to being a regular on a show a lot of your jobs you jump in and out to, uh, as a guest star uh and it's a one and done or you know just to pay the bills and so i there was it's very hard as a character actor when you're joining one week you're joining one cast and it feels like the first day of school you're getting to know new people and sometimes they're not so nice and then you have to work with yeah. certain attitudes. And right. that was always a challenging thing for me. And it's one of the reasons why when I was up at Suits, I would be like the bouncer. Anybody who puts up bad energy to a new person coming in, uh-uh. <laughs> everybody treats everybody equally. Yeah. Always. Crazy. And we had a very warm set. So anybody who was, part, who was coming in felt that feeling. We immediately you know, just quashed that and made them feel, because it's hard for actors to you yeah. know, adjust to new, to new groups. Yeah, I know, and I'm sure another challenge you have is balancing work and you're also a dad, so that's, that's- Yeah, speaking of which, I'm hearing banging going on downstairs from my five-year-old. Oh, so, <laughs> but he must be happy at home though. He, he suggests, he, he thinks my next job I keep telling him that I'm working on this new show. And he's like, you know what, Dad? I, Dad, I think you should work at McDonald's. Oh. And you should do fries. Oh, I mean, that's kind of back to your old roots, right? As a waiter. He, wants, he <laughs> thinks that because in. he loves the French fries and that he thinks I should be working at McDonald's. I think that's a valid request from a five-year-old. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I mean, back I told, to what I told, you started doing. <laughs> yeah. And I said, I said, listen, um, Hell no, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I'm just curious though, like how has your life changed since you've entered the entertainment oh. industry? I know it's a big one, but. No, everything's changed. Well, because of the last nine years, you know, I became, you know, I became a dad. My son's mom who we're like family up here, you know, I would never have met her if I hadn't worked in Canada. I would never have had a beautiful boy Oh. You know, and um, and I would have never found my b biggest passion, which is being a dad. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and and when you're and you know, I'm sure you've heard this before. When you're a parent, when you really are a parent, you love parenting, but you actually love it as much as you know you can go crazy. It changes your perspective with everything, as far as your temperament, your, your, your how you manage your stress levels. You, you kind of grow up with your kid again. So it's like you're learning how to live your life again. It's, it's, it's a great experience if you really do love to parent. That's how my life has changed.
Now, I, I'm curious, because you've been in the industry for a while, and for someone like me, I'm really interested in entertainment reporting, and I was wondering if you have any advice for me. Just any exactly who I'm talking to right now, stick to that. Stick to being Amanda, and always ask the questions that Amanda wants to hear. But as long as your questions are earnest, and they come from your heart, and they're honest, they'll be forced to answer them because they're not coming from a phony place. Come on, you want to be in the interview for a minute? Come, come up quick. Come say hi to Amanda. Hi, Cole. Come here, come here. Hello. <laughs> How are you? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> meet you. So yeah. Amanda, Amanda is interviewing me about suits. And do, you like, do you like your dad's work? Yeah. Where, yeah. Did you say, where did you say I should work next time? Did you say, where did you say, remember? McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I think your dad's a really good actor. He he used to do some catering back in the day, but now let's let him stick to acting. Definitely. Oh no, I, I cater to this kid every day. I always try he wants he's always hungry every five seconds. Yeah, every five seconds. Say good luck, Amanda. Say it. Do, do you know what good luck means? No. Oh, you don't know what it means? I do know what it means, but I don't want to... But you don't want to wish her luck? No. Okay. Well okay. I'll wish So I'll just go about my yeah. day then. You know, I'll explain it to you later, and then I'll you'll feel good guilty. Luck. Ah, you thank just, you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I'll just go do something else. Then maybe I'll go to McDonald's <laughs> now. I'm really good at the oven, so you know. Yeah. No, I have a feeling you should you should uh, you be stick to what I'm doing. Yeah. Oh. Don't give up on my my oh, day job. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Rick. I appreciate. You got it, Amanda.